Good evening. I'd like to call to order this uh, council meeting of uh, August the 14th, if you'd. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you read the roll call, please? Mr. Shiland? Present. Mr. Moore? Present. Ms. Reclue? Mr. Shiverdecker? Here. Mr. Simmons? Here. Mr. Stone? Mr. Vaughn? Here. And Mr. Braun? Here. Six council members present, two absent. Very good, thank you. You'd all rise with me. Uh, Pastor Bruce Williamson is with us this evening. He'll graciously uh, lead us in the invocation. Thank you. And if you just go right into the pledge, we'd, we'll follow right along. Thank I'll you. do that, sir. Let's offer a moment of silence for the firefighters that have lost their lives in California, protecting their fellow citizens. Heavenly Father, we realize the difficulty and the danger that's associated with public safety officers, police officers and firefighters. They take that responsibility and the courage that's needed with it, help their neighbors regardless of the cost or the danger. And two more will have services on Thursday that have perished fighting the fires in California. We just remember tonight the diligence and the courage by which these men and women do their job every day to protect and serve the communities they live in. And Lord, we want to thank you for all of them. We pray as well for those still on the fire lines, 14,000, but the weather hopefully will change and help them bring the fires under control. In the east, Lord, New England area, Pittsburgh east, the floods, a different issue. I pray for those that are facing overwhelming issues and I pray for the safety of the general public and those that are working in rescue. We have a hope of rain here in the heartland of America and we do pray for our farmers. So many of our neighbors and friends, Lord, feed us every day, growing the crops and livestock that we set on the table for our meals. We pray, Lord, for our farmers, for the rain they so need at such a desperate time. I lift up, Lord, uh, those that serve this city, our mayor and council persons, and all those, Lord, that uh, serve on boards and committees and lead departments within the administration, and the boots on the ground that work every day and night to keep us safe and move our city forward. I'm grateful for each one. Also for those, Lord, that faithfully serve this city at whatever level I continue to pray for, but not limited to Mayor Benton and Chief Myers, Mr. and Mrs. Reclue, Mr. Chilin, Mr. Moore, and anyone else connected to the city family who needs your daily health touch and maintenance. I pray for the busy itinerary tonight and those that will share discussions that will be held and any decisions that will be made. Father, I pray that they'll be made pleasing unto you. We thank you for the gift and blessing of living in the community that is our home. We pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Face flag, please. <clears throat> Attention, salute, and pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, At the beginning of each uh, council meeting, we set a time aside for anyone uh, residing in the community who has a concern or uh, something they'd like to share with the council to uh, come forward and do that. We just ask that you limit your comments to five minutes and uh, we go from there. So uh, if there's anyone present who's not on the agenda, uh, if they would like to address the council, uh, please come forward at this time. <coughs> Once again, Beverly Gray, 112 West Oliver, Fulton. I'm here to address my continuing concerns on the rezoning of the property at Business 54 in Rice Road. Um, to me, to have this 
I'm not against affordable housing. That's wonderful. Let's find another location for it. Uh, I don't know how many of you are aware, if you have a child in the Fulton schools, they're one mile from that school, they have to walk. Do you want your child walking down Business 54? I'm not worried about property values. I'm worried about the young people that will be in this location. Uh, maybe with this new park and recreation things, maybe we should approach uh, a hotel. Let them come in. That would give us some money. I don't see how affordable housing is going to increase the financing of Fulton in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I just, uh, I'm just, I have a great, great concern for the young people. I believe Mr. Bell told us in previous meetings he has tried for 10 or 11 years to sell this property. In contacting some realtors, Cole, Boone, and Callaway counties, he hasn't talked to any of them. The first time it was listed with a realtor was approximately two years ago with a local realtor. So for the safety of the young people that would be in this housing, build it, but build it in a different location. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else would like to address council? I think I saw someone get up over here. No? Okay. Good evening, this is Joseph Garner, a Youth 180 participant that's been interning at the city in all of our different departments. How's it going, Joe? Good. Good. Um, so my name is Joseph Garner. I live on 604 Grand Avenue. Um, so I got into this internship through the Youth 180 program at the Missouri Job Center. Um, it helps uh, low-income youth and um, at-risk youth gain and retain employment and help out in the community. Um, so throughout this internship, I've experienced uh, a lot of friendly and patient staff that have been willing to um, teach and train me with everything that they do and all of the responsibilities that are thrust upon them day to day. Um, I've enjoyed every single department at the city of Fulton, even the ones that I didn't think I would like, like solid waste and grass. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have? Does the council have any questions for me? Yes, yes Jill. Do you sit, do you uh, check all the part? Got to go through all the departments, huh? I like the sewer treatment plant to this section. Yeah. <laughs> Random resident operation out there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what were some of your better, what was the best day? I would say the best day was with IT, with um, the new IT manager, Chris. I got to see a lot of um, what he does, um, which I'm really interested in computers. That's great. So what are your plans now that you're, I think today was your last day? Yeah. So what are your plans? Um, I'm hoping to, um, well, tomorrow I have to go to school, so. <laughs> <laughs> so what yes. year, what year of school are you at? I'm uh, going to be a senior at Fulton High. And so when you graduate from high school, what, what are you looking at doing? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking to go to college. Um, I'm hoping for um, an Ivy League like Harvard, but I'm also Ooh. willing to go to um, smaller colleges like Westminster here in Fulton. Good luck. Thank Very you. Good. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to be doing in 10 and 15 years? Um, probably working in uh, government, possibly in city government, where I'm helping the people directly. Very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed that one. He uh, was prompt on that yeah, question. There <laughs> I think it's safe to say that the first time we met Joe, he was pretty timid and quiet and didn't say anything to anyone. 
but now I had him for his last hour today and he doesn't stop talking. So <laughs> I think we've broken through that shell. <laughs> I talked to him three weeks ago in Michelle's office and I just, at that point I said, so what's been the best part about, about doing this? And he just said, all the employees are so nice. And that, I, I can't think of a nicer compliment you're going to give in the, the city and the community and the employees that he's been sharing the summer with. So thank you, for, thank you for sharing the summer with us. My first experience with Joe was he was my instructor when he comes to the computer. And he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Uh, Joe, I know the city has benefited from you working with us. And, and uh, uh, we appreciate your attitude and, and your stick to it in us. And, and uh, we're, we're, we're glad that you had a positive experience because we had one also. So thank you again. Thank you for your time. Yeah. And yeah. good luck. Thank yeah. you good for luck spending good. your summer with us. Okay. Do we have anyone else? Okay. Here. Jeremy, can you do something with that buzz? <laughs> Hello. So I am Cassie Santuff and 4194 Terra Lake Drive here in Fulton. And I am with um, Jerry Polston, Erica Polston, and then my husband Matt and daughter Ava. And we are here um, to just ask for your blessing on a proposal that we have made to the Brook District and um, to turn the bricks gold for September, which is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, this is something that I have dreamed about since Sam was diagnosed, and I believe Erica and Jeremy are very excited to try to see something like this happen as well. I have submitted a quick proposal. I hope that you all have copies of what those might be in front of you. Um, if not, I have one that we can circulate here for you. And I just want to say thank you because the city of Fulton has been amazing to us over and over and over again and we really have been so incredibly blessed. Um, what this proposal will do will um, basically put new banners up on the Brick District lamppost that really highlight the need for childhood cancer awareness. We have talked to the Brick District about um, offering clings that are informational um, in their store windows. They're going to turn everything gold in their store windows as well and just support the movement. This is a, it's a free um, free thing to do. The foundation is going to cover expenses for it and um, it's just a really big deal for pediatric cancer and the community that it has engulfed in Callaway County and beyond. One thing that we hope to do with this is to bring as much media attention to Fulton and to the Brook District and this great small town that we get to call home and I think that we're going to be very successful in doing that. We've already gotten um, semi-commitments based on whether or not we get approved to do it from the local TV stations, radio stations, and uh, we plan to reach out beyond there too. The childhood cancer community is a tight-knit community and we are very confident that this will explode for them because this isn't something that happens every day. And, um, and we're, we're really, really excited to see it happen. The Brick District approved it unanimously and that was very exciting for us as well. So. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on any of this, but uh, the one thing that we will also be asking to do is to turn the fountain gold for the month of September as well. So we have, Bill Johnson has been very gracious to hear us um, here over the last few weeks and we appreciate that, as well as Courtney and as well as Robert Boone as well. So we appreciate that. We've done a little bit of legwork here to make sure that everything can be done in a timely way, very efficiently, and uh, at no cost to the city. Just, we're here to ask your blessing. So, what, so the city's involvement, they, they would supply us new banners. Uh, the crew would go and swap out those banners for, for the entire month of September, downtown, just, just on Court Street. Um, she will supply us some dye to put in the fountain. Um, we have checked it out. It's not gonna, it's not gonna stain the concrete. It's not gonna, we've, we've dyed the fountain different colors before. We've just never done gold before. Um, and we've always had really good luck. So we, we, they have some approved dyes that they're looking at. They're also looking at a, at a banner that would cross the road. We don't have a location downtown 
for to tie off a banner on both sides of the street. But what we could do is if, if they're so interested and, and so willing, um, get the banner following the rules that have been established in the Chamber of Commerce for the banner placement. And we could um, put it up on Business 54 someplace where the banners generally go. And then at the end of September, we'd change the water in the fountain and take the banners down and put the old ones back up. Did, so I I think hear, did I hear you wanted to change to dye the street green or oh, I mean gold? No. no, sorry. So we oh, just, oh. We, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> so that really, it's just a, a play on words to turn the bricks gold. Oh, okay. Um, just a, a way to acknowledge the brick district and get some promotion there as well. And, uh, and then gold. So I actually, the first idea was to paint the bricks gold, and Ava asked me specifically if that meant that we were going to literally spray paint the bricks gold, and I was like, no, no, no. And then it's like, okay, we need to come up with a different, different turn well, of phrase. I, I went to school at Rolla, and we painted <laughs> the streets green. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And well, everything else we now. could get our hands on. <laughs> yeah. Police cars and street lights. And yeah. Well, we're not asking for that much. Okay. <laughs> um, the banner, can we go building to building? We, the city of Fulton, is not going to attach a banner to a building. Okay. If if they can if they are so fortunate as to find a building downtown that is willing to allow them to put anchors in their building and tie it off to their building across the street, more power to them. Okay. <laughs> the city of Fulton is not going to be involved in that process. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And that's completely okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can go over here just basically kind of telling you what's going to happen rather than totally asking permission and just make sure that everybody's everybody's okay with it. Are you two guys cool with it? Uh, yeah, we're, with, I'm good with, with it. We've, we've, we've had several conversations and yeah, it's we're good. Oh, okay. I think in talking to you, you had mentioned there were some businesses not on Court Street that are part of the Brick District that you wanted to put the, you were going to supply banners for, is that? We are willing to supply banners for anybody who wants one. Okay. <laughs> and anywhere we're willing to put one. Okay. Um, but I do know that it was going, the proposal was for the entire Brick District, and so all of the businesses in the Brick District are going to be supporting it in one way or another. So whether or not they're going to hold a special at their stores, they're going to have our leaflets and, and flyers explaining why pediatric cancer awareness is important. <coughs> and, um, and so that would really be up to you all. But we'll supply the banners, and we, we're getting them printed free of cost as well. You, so get, you, you bring awesome. some banners, we'll get them up. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, we're very excited, and I think this will be good for the childhood cancer community. I know our families, it's going to mean a lot to us. So thank you very much, and we'll do our best to represent Fulton well and all the promotions for it. Casey, is, the best, is, is that a good email address to reach you at? Um, yes, that's on there. Absolutely. SuperSamFoundation.com. Uh-huh. Absolutely. All right. all right. Well, thank you. Sounds I probably great. went over my five minutes. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Look forward to September. We're going to be gold. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Are there any anyone else present who'd like to address the council? Okay, seeing no one coming forward, we'll move on with our agenda. Tonight we have a public hearing. Uh, the, the hearing is to consider a uh, rezoning request for 711 and 715 Nichols. And uh, the present zoning is R3 and they're requesting to go to C2 commercial. Uh, during our pub public hearing, we'll take uh, uh, comments only from those who would like to uh, discuss this issue. Uh, and. Uh, during the hearing, I'll make uh, three calls for anyone who wishing to uh, speak in opposition to the matter, and then three calls for anyone speaking uh, in support of the matter. And uh, I'll also mention that that's not limited just to three people, so if there's more than, uh, you know, someone just come on up by and, and stand behind the presenter, and then we'll, we'll recognize you as we come to that. Uh, so at this uh, time, uh, we'll go ahead and, and call the uh, public hearing to order. And uh, at this time, 
I've already said what we're going to consider, so therefore we'll go on to, uh, I'll issue three calls uh, for anyone wishing to speak in opposition to uh, this rezoning uh, being considered, and at this, uh, at this time I'll issue the first call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition of the proposed rezoning? Please come forward. Seeing no one coming forward, I'll go to the second call. Is there anyone uh, present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed rezoning? Again, seeing no one call, uh, coming forward, I'll issue the third and final call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition of the proposed rezoning? Thank you. No one coming forward. I'll now issue three calls for anyone wishing to speak in favor of the uh, matter being considered. First call, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in, in favor of the proposed rezoning? Very good. Good, good evening, evening. Mayor Benton and council people, persons. Uh, my name is Rebecca Dunger Peak. I'm the pastor at Court Street United Methodist Church. My address is 907 Lyle Street in Fulton, Missouri. Uh, the property belongs to our church currently. We had been in the process of revisioning and reconsidering our mission, and owning that property is no longer in our uh, mission and vision. And that means we'd like to sell it. Uh, it was commercial, zoned with Curves being our renters. And Curves not only uh, closed their business, but then because their license uh, expired, then we lost the commercial zoning as we were trying to sell the property. And it reverted back to residential. We would like to get commercial zoning again so that we can have more luck with selling it. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Les Hudson, 903 Bradley Lane, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Johnson, Council. We have, and when I say we, the Methodist Church have owned that building for 10 years. Uh, had we been able to sell that building in April, we wouldn't be standing before you because it would have been an automatic commercial deal, but we didn't get it done. So it needs to be zoned as a commercial for us to sell it that way. That building has been a commercial ever since a commercial building ever since it was built. It was built over 100 years ago. It started out as a stables. It's been a feed store. It's been a garage. It's been a truck center. It's been curves. It's been the, at one point it was the YMCA. So it's been a number of things over the years that were all commercial, and we just need to get it zoned commercial so we can sell it as such. If I, I really don't know what you would do the build with the building if it wasn't zoned commercial probably just have to tear it down and build apartments or something there. So we'd like to see this advanced on and, and uh, get zoned commercial so we can sell it as such. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. I'll issue the second call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of, of this proposed rezoning? Good evening. My name's Linda Roots. I live at 315 West 7th Street where um, I own that home with my husband, John. And we also own the home next door, which we use as a rental property. And um, we are very invested in the neighborhood. I'm a member of the church. I'm interested in affordable housing, as you all know, and uh, interested in the central part of town. And I do believe that for this property to be rezoned commercial, have a good tenant there, uh, would make the neighborhood safer and would stabilize that property. So I appreciate your um, consideration. Thank you. Thank you. you <clears throat> I'll now issue the, the third and final call. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of this proposed rezoning? Seeing no one coming forward, I'll uh, now declare this public hearing as closed and we'll move back to our uh, regular agenda. Thank you for all your participation. 
The council will be considering this question later in, in, in our agenda. Uh, approval of the consent agenda is our next item. Consent agendas are used by the council to expedite and hopefully be more efficient on some of the uh, more mundane things that we do on the council, uh, such as approving minutes and so forth. Uh, and on the consent agenda this evening is uh, an approval of an event uh, for our house, which will happen, uh, looks like August the 19th, this Saturday. Uh, it's an annual fundraiser, it will be in Memorial Park. The, the uh, requested approval of a uh, uh, event on behalf of the Callaway Humane Society, and they'll use uh, part of the trail, et cetera, and the dog park for uh, their annual uh, dog jog, and uh, which will happen on September the 8th. And then the final uh, request is for the approval of the full, by the full high school Student Council request for a homecoming parade on Friday, September 28th. And uh, I think this event's already been approved by uh, Chief Meyer and uh, uh, it's been run through the staff. So I don't think there's much different from pre previous years. So uh, is there any item on the consent agenda that someone would like to pull off? If there's not, I make a motion we accept it consent agenda is printed second. second very good we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda is there any further discussion of that motion hearing none all those in favor of the motion please signify by saying yes. yes yes all those opposed no very good the consent agenda stands approved we'll now move on to unfinished business uh, we're going to ask uh, our engineer, Kyle uh, Bremer, if you'll come up and give us an update on the 54, uh, Business 54 project and the 4th Street Improvement Project. And looks like our next item is stormwater, so if you want to just move on to that when you're done with the other, that'd be great. I'll go right through them. <clears throat> uh, business 54 project. Um, hopefully you guys have been driving down Business 54 and safely and slowly and keep an eye out for the workers so um, they've obviously started around Bartley School and uh, they are working their way to the roundabout um, their schedule uh, next week as early as next week has them jumping uh, to this side of the roundabout and working on the city section of business 54 so hopefully if everybody's been looking at the weather you know hopefully uh, w we get some rain. I hate to say that, but everybody, you know, the rain is, rain, rain is needed badly. Unfortunately, it it might slow their work down a little bit. But uh, um, they believe that they're on schedule. Uh, they've been good to work with. Um, right now, I have no reason not to have any have uh, uh, confidence in them. So um, they've been doing they've been doing good work uh, as I see it thus far. Uh, is there any questions? And just, I'd like to throw out that so far in the project, MoDOT has been an awesome partner. Yeah. They have, they have provided a lot of, of guidance and assistance in getting us to this stage, and I look forward to uh, the continued relationship and th their continued assistance. Yeah, very good point. That, that's definitely true. So the, the work that I've seen so far is pretty much all sidewalk work in some of the approaches are they doing gutter work or doing something under the sidewalks are they or is another company coming back to work on the curbs and the on, road or on uh, on the state section of it which is south of the roundabout and, and north of Ava Bell mm -hmm. on their sections of it they are uh, primarily upgrading sidewalks to meet ADA compliance. So, okay. um, cross slopes at, at 2% or less, and, and also after that's over, doing a overlay of the road, milling overlay of the road. So, um, they're not, they're, the, the state sections, they're not doing curb and gutter primarily, unless it happens to affect a, a sidewalk. Okay. Um, on our section, 
we're primarily doing curb and gutter work and you know a mill and overlay mm -hmm. um, we're doing sidewalks only and I want to be care I want to stress only at uh, at street crossings and at uh, entrances um, you know we simply could not afford to do uh, the straight sections of sidewalk we could barely afford uh, thanks to your all's uh, upgrading of the project uh, financially uh, to do what to do the the uh, curb and gutter and, and the street work and the storm storm water facilities that we can upgrade through there. So the north of the roundabout up to, up to the bridge of the Bell Press right. is ours, and that's going to be some sidewalk work, mostly curb and gutter. And right. then eventually the electrical the utility portion need, with the right, removing the, the poles and right and, and that's what you know most people have seen uh, you know occur so far as, as all the all the utility work from uh, St. Louis and Bluff all the way uh, you know to 13th Street just north of Auburn right. Hill. So um, and that's an extensive extensive amount of work that's gone on. Mm -hmm. So and it continues to go on. So hopefully here. <coughs> Um, you know that'll progress eventually to those poles uh, being pulled, and we'll have the new uh, decorative lighting and everything like right. that. But I do not expect that. Uh, <coughs> I do not expect that to to happen before the contractor gets there and, and does the curb and gutter work through there. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we still look for it all to be done done by December. Is that correct? Thanks, Kevin. The the contract the contractor is supposed to be done by December. So. I have a question about the sidewalk areas that we've tore up. Uh, when, when is that plan to be put back? Yeah, Bill has addressed pieces. that with me uh, to some degree. And, and uh, right now, um, I'd like to see uh, all the utilities. Uh, there's our utilities, there's AT&T, there's Charter. Uh, there's uh, socket up through there. I like to see, um, you know, if if I had my way, which which I may not get my way, is is to hold off to see because there, you know, there's turn ups, turn outs that uh, that they've got to do. So more sidewalk may be affected just adjacent to uh, the sidewalk that say our electric department has put in. So um, you know, I I just don't want to. You know, patch a little a little piece of sidewalk, and then I have all these contractors run through there, and I've got more to do. But uh, uh, I do understand that there's a safety factor there. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions, Kyle, on that on the 54 project? You want to jump to the Fourth Street? Fourth Street, thank you. Fourth Street project. Paperwork is dragging along here. We've got uh, uh, MoDOT has given what's called the concurrence of award to the uh, contractor. Now the contractor has got to uh, get all of all of his. Um, he's got to sign the contract. He's got to get all of his bonding in, um, insurance, all all those all those items into MoDOT, and then. Uh, MoDOT gives a notice to proceed. I've been told that that uh, possibly just after um, just after Labor Day that he'll be able to start. So, unfortunately, it's painfully slow in getting this uh, getting all the the I's dotted and the T's crossed and everything like that. Any questions on Fourth Street, yeah, Mr. Mayor? I'm sorry. Oh, I want, had a question on on the tenth and bluff a while ago, but you didn't see me. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, Go ahead. The last week, three days that I went down there to the stoplight. Now I know it construction, a lot of construction went on there, but at one point you said going east, uh, south and north, we get a uh, red lights and we sit about four or five minutes before it ever changed for us to do anything. Going <laughs> south and north. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and the two sides, the 10th Street, they all get to go, and we just was sitting. Yeah, we've there. almost we've almost blown up that intersection. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the uh, um, you know I knew, I do know that we have affected uh, some of the some of the loops that are in the pavement that that uh, indicate there's vehicles there. To, uh, that's so what it's I on a, was going on. Un unfortunately, it's on a timed uh, operation, and uh, but. You, know, you say four or five minutes. That seems yeah, that seems yeah, too long. I know that I've heard on the east-west legs, it's been it's been an issue for a while. But it was kind of fun because we all was fools just sitting there, kept waiting. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I will have I, I will send uh, send Jason with with uh, Street of Barbara's traffic division to go. Kind but of I can understand until it. it's all done. But I was just let you know yeah. it, it, where it was going on like. That was one of the topics at the meeting this morning. As they continue to tear out curb and do street cuts to make so when they come back it's clean joints. We know right now that they're gonna, they will saw through all of the detection loops. So Kyle and the guy and this crew are going to put all of the street lights in that section on timer mode. So it's, 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 it's they're gonna all be on timer pretty much from now until um, the asphalt's laid and they, the detector loops are repaired. I don't understand that. Can't we do flashing red? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'd also like to thank Jenny. She's been, been uh, putting some updates in the paper uh, on the project, so uh, I'd like to thank her on that. That's good support. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? On the fourth street. If not, we'll move on then. If you want to give us your ideas of what's going on with stormwater. Stormwater. Let's start up here. I mean, from the beginning. Here we go. Uh, stormwater sales tax. All right. What, we, what you see on the screen is uh, 16 through 18, the uh, revenues collected. Uh, the obligated funds to date, um, if you look at the, the to date column, um, it gets pretty close to that number right there. Um, the, the first thing we, that we uh, pretty well spent, spent money on was a uh, stormwater system pilot evaluation that was uh, done um, in a section, you know, kind of downtown or just adjacent to downtown that includes Jefferson Street and uh, Nickel Street primarily. Uh, we had a company come in and, and evaluate all the, all the stormwater um, facilities that we have or don't have in the areas that we need and um, assess the area and, and, and kind of tell us where they, they think we need upgrades at. Um, so from that, from that study, uh, they told us that, hey, down there at Hensley Field, um, Second Street, Hensley Field, Jefferson Street, kind of that area is a, is a pretty good bottleneck um, where stormwater just can <coughs> make its way down to uh, uh, Stinson Creek. Um, they suggested that a, a, uh, another facility be, be built uh, adjacent to Hensley Field that will allow Stormwater to uh, to get to get to Stinson Creek and get out. Uh, we have uh, purchased uh, pipe at the moment, and uh, we have not constructed that at at all yet. Uh, we're waiting to get that done. We're we're, we're trying to do a lot of things at, at once. Um, that's expected to cost about about uh, twenty thousand dollars or so, and that's with city crews doing it. So. Um, you know, keep that in mind. Um, Jefferson Street uh, is another section. We just uh, upgraded, um, slowly upgraded, I should say, the sanitary sewer uh, that runs up Jefferson Street uh, all the way to 7th. And the contractor unfortunately took forever, and now we're going to uh, torment the people, unfortunately, more in that area. And uh, city crews are going to be constructing. Uh, storm sewer up Jefferson Street all the way to 7th Street. Um, if you drive that section of, of uh, road, there really is no storm sewer at all. 
uh, north of Jefferson Street parking lot is, is, <coughs> is where it stops. And uh, uh, there's, there's been issues with uh, you know, residents around that area and it's just, uh, it just needs some storm sewer. Um, so when they were, uh, fortunately, when they were doing the sanitary sewer work, uh, we did, uh, uh, engineering staff did uh, collect uh, data points where there was <coughs> all the crossing utilities from uh, gas, uh, sewer, uh, communications, all that kind of thing, and, and we're trying to miss those as much as possible. Um, so um, hopefully eventually we'll, uh, we'll get uh, storm sewer facilities. Uh, all the way to 7th and, uh, and potentially this will be something that we'll need to talk about but uh, curb and gutter up through there as, as uh, there's not much, of, not much of any on that street uh, and redo that street. Um, Jefferson Street parking lot, um, we have just, uh, we started sawing pavement uh, on Monday on Jefferson Street parking lot. Um, all the businesses that kind of uh, are on the south side of that parking lot uh, on on uh, Fifth Street. So um, a lot of storms, storm water when it rains heavy, jumps uh, jumps Nickel Street and ends up in that in that parking lot. And there's also some uh, coming down directly from the north, and and uh, a bunch of those businesses have, have uh, got a bunch of. Uh, stormwater issues because of it. So um, we are putting stormwater detention in that parking lot underneath pavement. And uh, it's kind of an innovative project that uh, also, uh, also can help address some of our stormwater permit requirements as well. Uh, it says water, as water runs through the pavement, there's pervious pavement that's gonna be installed. As it runs through the pavement, it'll be uh, detained for a certain amount of time and then released uh, in, a, in a cleaner fashion than just hitting an hitting a, uh, open storm sewer uh, directly. Um, city crews are also doing that work, so um, we're trying to extend the dollars that we do have, you know, approximately, depending on sales tax, you know, $400,000 a year uh, can only go so far. So uh, the more forces that, that, uh, that uh, we use in-house, uh, the more we can extend it. Um, that's also, uh, that was also addressed in, in the Burns and McDonald uh, pilot evaluation. Uh, they suggested uh, that this was, the, that that uh, parking lot needed to be addressed. Uh, they also cover Nickel Street. Um, we have not made it to Nickel Street yet, so, so we're still got our hands full with, with uh, the Jefferson Street area. Um, the two projects that I covered, uh, before this, Business 54 project and 4th Street project are both being assisted with stormwater dollar funds. Uh, you've probably seen uh, the street department and, and many other departments doing a bunch of work uh, on, on both of those projects. Uh, Business 54, uh, our crews have tried to do as much of the stormwater um, upgrades as we can uh, to minimize um, extra cost by the contractor. So uh, there's $350,000 uh, designated to the Business 54 project and, and $150,000 to the 4th Street project. Uh, any questions thus far? The Jefferson Street, Jefferson Street parking lot work, when do you think you'll be done? Well, I gave them like, a month. Is what I gave. Oh, okay. I, is what I gave our crew. I gave our crew a month, God willing, and creek I, don't rise too high. I know several business people on Fifth Street, and they're kind of interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, and we we have sent, uh, uh, we have went and talked with as many as them as as we could. Yep. Um, Which is good. The ones that we couldn't, we've hung yeah. hung little uh, flyers on to and told them to call us if they can. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, the next slide that I'm going to show is kind of a pretty soft slide, so just keep that in mind. Uh, future projects, uh, we do have a stormwater permit that we got to live by. 
uh, through DNR. Um, I've got some things to address uh, to meet our newer storm water permit, and uh, uh, I'm hoping to get some help from, uh, uh, from an engineering firm to make sure that we address those properly. And uh, it, it's also in combination with our uh, TMDL requirements uh, with uh, uh, the sanitary sewer element. Um, there's some others on the list. If you got any questions, um, I'm just trying to really show that they're that uh, the, the ones on the bottom are have grants attached to them. Again, I'm trying to extend dollars uh, by going out and seeking grants uh, to match them with. If we can only pony up 20 percent, and uh, we can get a grant to do 80 percent, we can do more. So, any questions? What's the uh South Business 54 and Collier. South Business 54 Collier TAP grant that has to be on a, uh, the TAP grant has to be on a section of uh, MoDOT right away. Um, it is a transportation alternative project uh, is what it is for. Uh, similar to what we're using on 4th Street. And uh, if, you, if you drive from Westminster to Collier, you'll, you'll see that there is no sidewalk that connects the sidewalk that is nice and new that they're putting in now. It'd be nice if we had some, uh, my thoughts were it'd be nice if we had some connectivity with the sidewalk, especially with the new Willow Creek subdivision going in. It's right next to Bartley School. Um, and meanwhile, we could extend the south end improvements that have the curb and gutter and sidewalk. Um, with that and beef up the pavement that gets put down this round. Um, so there's a good three lanes, uh, another, you know, another, another couple blocks um, headed north. So that's what that's all about. So what do you think your options on the East 2nd Street Bridge are? The East 2nd Street Bridge, I'm hoping to get a grant there too. We've applied for a grant uh, uh, several, several months back now. Uh, that was sponsored by MoDOT to the federal government, actually. So we got their support, and um, you know we were we were uh, they were very selective on who they who they uh, you know elected support, and we got a bunch of bunch of uh, support letters, and we uh, were lucky to garner their support, and we're, we're hopeful that we get that grant. Well, real quick before you, before I let you go, because you know when you grow old you forget. When Greg Hayes was here, MoDOT said when they paved our highway out south that they don't let them forget about the turning lane for the police station up there. They should be putting that turning lane in this. this That's what uh, they, when they come to pave, they said this year. Yeah, it's, it's, it's part of this project uh, that they're doing right now with, that we're jointly performing with them. So. Uh, they promised just they would do it then, so yeah. I'm just letting you remind them that yeah. we still remember. <laughs> Chief Myers has reminded them, me and them, several different times <laughs> on that fact. Well, I remember they were here and they said yeah. they would do it for yeah. us. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other so questions? When you, when you say future projects, is that next year? Is that two years? What, what, what time frame is that? Uh, well, good question. We've got a, it probably, probably depends on how quick we can get done with what we've, with what we've got opened up and started right now, right? Gotcha. You know? I had a list on the uh, slide before that that uh, we're showing projects that we're going on right now that we haven't d done much headway with, but, you know, like. And, and I know we're, they're working budget-wise is why, I, is that, it's part of that being figured into the budget as we move forward with it? It will be, yeah, it will be. I mean, I, th these are, these are items that, that, that are uh, uh, in my head. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily uh, the greatest projects or whatnot, you know. So we'll have to collectively, uh, through administration help, your all's help, decide if those are, are uh, indeed important ones or we need to pursue it else. You know, else if we ones. get one of the grants, obviously that one's going to pop up on the list. It's going right. to go to the head. And, so, and some, some of the other things, you know, we had a million and a half dollars of the projects up there. And he's getting about $400,000 a year or so just to fund what was on the board for about four years. Look at it this way. I came on the council in 84 and they told me we was doing exciting things, building a new city hall. 1996 or 97 when we got to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Nothing else for Kyle? We'll let him go. Thank you, Kyle. Good presentation.
I could go Thank longer you. at a working session if you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 you're good. Bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item on our agenda uh, it, that is council concerns. Uh, this new, is new time business? that you can, new business. There's mm -hmm. nothing under oh, new business unless business. you have some. Yes. Okay. I do. <laughs> I'm looking. Uh, 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 Log Cabin Road. Okay. I, I know Bill has probably talked to Kyle once or twice about that, and I just think we need to address that eventually. What is it? Okay. It's a road that has not a lot of traffic, but <coughs> it's, uh, it's a road that we had taken up the asphalt because we couldn't, it doesn't have a bottom to the road. It, it's kind of a bad road, but now I think the situation has turned worse than it was when it was blacktopped. And it's causing some problems out on the highway and with dust control and stuff. And I just think it's something that we should address. We'll uh, see if we can't work that in next year's budget when we're looking at the roads. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do with it now. I think uh, the street department's grading it every quarter or so, aren't you? <coughs> So they're trying to keep it as smooth as possible. That's not going to do anything with the dust. No, I, I had uh, talked to Kyle quite a while back about uh, doing like the county does with the, oh, the, uh, some dust, dust just treatment. anything to help help the dust situation. And I think he did check around some prices. And yeah. I don't know. And okay. I, you know, he was going to talk to Bill. Very good. I'll check into that with you. Okay. Dust tree. Okay. Any other new business? Okay. If not, we'll move on to council concerns. Uh, time bring forward anything that's not on the agenda. So uh, if you'll raise your hand, I'll recognize you, Mr. Shiloh. I'd like to see us replace both of these monitors on both heads, put up some 60-inch uh, screens up there rather than these. I'm sitting here. Right now, that's a nice picture, but, it, but uh, I don't know how it is for you guys on the other end of the table down there, but it's kind of hard to read when it's in the writing up there. And it's like, face it, how many years old are those things now? And I think we may have enough money in the uh, council's fund to replace two monitors. And these things here, weigh, they weigh 600 pounds apiece. <laughs> and you can put these new new ones up that weigh maybe 30 you take? And, and 60 inch screens sure then do you think weighing the light would get in your way maybe if it's do we would we have to move them this way a little bit it could be adjusted <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's going to make us look any better way <laughs> I, I gave that up years ago <laughs> is there any uh, anything else you have no, I just okay. think we won't be able to spend some of that money. We'll, we'll, we'll have the IT folks look at that then. Okay. <laughs> Any other? Uh, yes. Uh, John? Go ahead. Go ahead. On, on Marbrook, we have two, I don't know whether they're sinkholes or what, they've been cut, but they've been cut for some time, like they're going to do some work to them, and they have not been taken care of, and I've had several people ask me about them. Okay. <coughs> we'll talk to Kyle about that. That's probably a Kyle. Okay. Isn't everything Kyle's? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, well Daryl tears it up. <laughs> God, Kyle's got to fix it. it. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty much the process. Is that right? <laughs> Do you have anything else, John? No. Okay. Very I good. have a couple items. Uh, one is. Downtown on Court Street, between 5th and 6th, there, uh, I was at an event there a couple of weeks ago downtown on the weekend, and quite a few people were complaining about, there's only, we only have two trash containers, and both of them are at 
each end of cord. And some people were wondering if there was possible to get them two more added to the center of Court Street. I don't know when, if you come out of any building or backs, you got to walk either all the way down to sixth or all the way to fifth instead of where the cars parked, you know, just having something a little closer. I thought up. that might be a good idea. I told them I'd ask and probably check on it. And also, I've got one other question. <coughs> the house on 6th Street, I, I know what the situation there is, but is the utility still off to that property? It has water. Does not have electricity. It does not have electricity. Okay. He does, he does periodically run a generator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody lives aware is aware of that. So, well, so is there somebody living there? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though we got an ordinance against it. So why, why do we have people living there? It's for the same reason that we went to court last Friday on that individual. Yeah. And the same reason we're going to court again on September 5th. We're, we're trying to get them out. They're okay. camping out. The individual has due process, okay? <laughs> okay. We can't always move as fast as we'd like to. Okay. As, like, as long as we're moving. There you go. Okay. We're trying. I think we're on oil. <laughs> okay. Uh, Steve? I only have one, but I kind of talked to Mr. Johnson this afternoon about it, but I'm happy to say in our ward that we are getting people coming in, buying homes and starting to remodel them. But I think that Dennis should work on the, I think the city could give a little boost in helping that out by trying to speed up by cleaning up property owners who refuse to maintain their property. Um, there's a couple I talked to Dennis about, but I don't know how we can do it, but I think that somehow those who just refuse to tick up the trash and mow that we're just going to have to figure a way to go in and just do the project and uh, bill them somehow. Sure. Dennis, you want to come up and give us an update of where we, where we are on housing and demolishing? And yeah, um, and last uh, Friday we sent out 10 letters. The first 10 letters we're going to send out, um, we have a list of about 80 properties that fit that kind of description and um, this week we've gotten responses from seven of the properties um, the individuals they are aware of the houses um, they're uh, and willing uh, to do something now that we've addressed the issue with them uh, a couple of them there I'm gonna get a list of uh, contractors that do demolition work and uh, get that back to them so um, they're willing to work with us on this first 10 that we've sent out so I'm going to send another 10 letters out this week to 10 more houses, properties. So it's just a process. The, the new ordinance, you know, following it with uh, the house on 6th Street, it's going to take some time. Um, Casey's been working with uh, issuing uh, uh, oh, for grass and derelict cars and stuff and they're trying to get that stuff moved. And the way, the way Dennis is doing it, if he gets brings it to 10 homeowners that nope, um, makes them aware that they have a, a house in town and they go ahead and deal with it, we're really not out anything. We're out, we're out the cost of a stamp and some time on the phone, but if we have to go through the process, you know, it's gonna be several thousand dollars per house and location. So I, I, think it's, I think he's really working in the community's best interest by trying to get <coughs> voluntary compliance. If the homeowner takes the property down, which several of them said they want to, you know, the, the individual homeowner doesn't have to go through all the processes that we do. So, I mean, we surprised you got seven out of ten to respond as quickly. Uh, yeah, um, I was too. Um, and we've got a lot of properties that people out of state own, so I haven't heard back from those, or the three that I haven't heard back from. Um, there are two houses on clay mine that uh, a contractor bought, and he took those down last week. Uh, another contractor bought a house on Bluff Street. He's uh, redoing it now, so it's just going to take some time. I mean, we haven't done anything in a few years, so we're getting scar started. We're working at it and continue to stir the pot. 
Okay. Well, and the other thing, I just thought, you know, as long as we kind of work and they see that the city's helping and those who are buying and remodeling there, if Mrs. Root says we need a few more affordable housing, that is definitely in my section. So, I just thought it might speed up, but it's starting to look better in some sections of that street. Anything else? I agree. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Very good. Thank you. Steve, do you have anything else? No. Okay, thank you. How about you, Mr. Sherbert? No, sir. Thank you, though. Very good. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to resolutions, of which I don't see any. So we'll now move on to ordinances. First reading. Uh, ordinance, uh, Bill number 1512 is an ordinance that has to do with the rezoning of uh, 711 and 715 Nickel Street, which we had a hearing on earlier in the, se in the session uh, this evening. And uh, so I, I think without any further ado, Councilman Moore, if you'd please present Bill number 1512, a title only, uh, for first reading. Bill number 1512, ordinance number blank, an ordinance reclassified under the zoning ordinance certain land in the city of Fulton, Missouri known as 711 and 715 Nickel Street and established an effective date. I moved this uh, place at Nick's regularly scheduled council meeting by title only. Second. Thank you. I uh, will mention if you noticed in your council packets, uh, planning and zoning did consider this and recommended that uh, uh, we approve this rezoning. And Dennis, I've actually, I was going to say, I've actually asked ahead. Dennis to come up and just read that section so everybody's okay. on the same page. Uh, motion was offered by Les Hudson and seconded by Mike Eibel to approve the zoning request made for these tracts of land and to recommend passage by the City Council. Roll call vote of members of the Commission were as follows Mike Eibel, yes. Les Hudson, yes. Ken McSwain, yes. Joan Barry Morris, yes. Ronald Annie, yes. Jeremy Washington, yes. Louis Beatty, no. Motion carried with six members of the commission voting in favor, one member Beatty opposed, and one member Kelly absent. Was there a, was there a mistake on that? At the bottom of that, when I read that, uh, it sounded I'd have to find it. It says motion was offered uh, by Ron, seconded by Jeremy Wilson. To, oh, no, that's to adjourn. Motion carried by six members of the commission voting in favor and one member, Betty, opposed, Oops. and one member, Kelly, absent. Yep, so there are eight members, so six were in favor, one was <coughs> absent, and one was opposed. The roll call is listed in the uh, sentence above. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear him read all of it then. I'm sorry. Very good. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, yeah probably. Um, I guess this is sitting right in the middle of an R3 zoning area across the street to C1, um, and they want to make this a C2. I think there was something years ago where the council talked about spot zoning, and this almost looks like that's what we're talking about here, is just taking two pieces of property out of what used to be the zoning area or the, the existing zoning and making it something different. Um, I am not going to disagree with you, but I will say due to the historical nature of, of the real estate, for the past hundred years, that property has been commercial. <coughs> but it, it was in a, for some reason, it was, it was not in a commercial zone. No, no, one, no one in the building can say why it was zoned, in, placed in the zone that it was. 
but it was, um, as it was presented during the public hearing, we have, you can look at it one of two ways. One's a non-conforming use, which would be a use outside of the traditional mm -hmm. for the zoning, and the other would be a conditional use, right. which would be, well, under one of those criteria, because that property has been continuous commercial for the past 100 years, under the city's zoning rules and regulations, it could continue to be commercial for the next 100 years as long as there was not a six month gap where it ceased being commercial. The only reason that this is an issue this evening is because the, vac the building's been vacant for more than six months. So then they, they lost that conditional use, usage ability on those two lots. If, if, as was mentioned, if it, this would have taken place in February or March, again, it wouldn't have came to the city council. It would have just been allowed to continue as a commercial district. But the property has been commercial use for 100 years. The and only other thing I see about changing it to a C2, and, and I get that it's been, been a commercial all this life, but the property is for sale. It's going to sell, and, and they have no idea what's going to go in there. According to C2, you could put about anything in there, right in the middle of a residential area. I, I just have a little problem with that. We're, we're kind of setting a precedent. We're, we're taking zoning. Zoning was made or brought up to protect areas. I mean, they made this area an R1, this an R2. Now we're spot, I'm, I agree with him, we're spot zoning. I think we're setting a bad precedence, but uh, it's, it's looking like that regardless of where your property is, if you don't see fit that it's that way, that I'll oh, go down to the city, they'll change it for you. Uh, I just have a problem. It, and it seems like that's what we're doing. Can I ask Dennis a question? Or maybe you can answer it. Is there another zoning that could be for this than other than C2? Uh, no, not for, not for commercial. Okay. But it, under, why would it, but why under would it uh, R3? C1, the setbacks. Your downtown is about the only C1 you will have. But under R3, if you read this, you could build about anything you want in there. You know, R3? Pretty, pretty close. R3 or C2? No, on R3. Read R3. Well, R3 it, is what everything else is around it. It, it is R3. It's yes. R3 right now. And and you could do but, anything but, but you a can, You can do more than just residential on an R3. Yeah, but you couldn't have business. It eliminates well, your no, business. Well, no, that's not true. Read R3. The way I read it, it says, it says you can have boarding houses, lodging houses, group homes, group home projects, uh, fraternities, sorority houses, dormitories, family daycare homes, daycare centers, preschools, nursery schools, play, children playgrounds, instructional buildings that what it eliminates it eliminates the I guess the commercial building retail uh, hospitals sanitary clinics accessory uses uh, I don't get that and that's all under R3 and and that sounds commercial to me mm -hmm. It, it doesn't get in, as involved as C2. No, but when then, when the get, then when you get then when you get C2, read what you can put in there on C2. Yeah, it, it opens uh, garages, mm -hmm. uh, parking lots, used car lots. Truck depot. You could do about anything, and there's no guarantee that that ain't what's going to happen. No, the, they go there, right in there and tear that building down and build whatever they want, and you have no say. Well, I don't, I don't agree with it. Uh, Dennis? 
Do you happen to know what happened to 713? 713. 711, uh, <laughs> and then you have an easement yeah, for a driveway. Any, uh, and then I don't you do have the addresses. Uh, engineering does, and we discussed that. And I'm not sure if there was a lot back. Uh, there's an alley. If there was a lot back in there, and it got the two lots got combined. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened with 713. You got to when we were talking yeah. about 7-Eleven and 15 and then 19, I think that's what we had come to the conclusion. And 17 is the pad, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. There's not any further discussion. I'm going to call for a question. We have a motion in the second uh, to advance bill number 1512. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. 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 Could I have a show of hands on the no? One, two, three. So that's three on the yes. Uh, I'll, uh, Mayor will break the tie. I will vote yes uh, so we can continue the discussion of this at the next council meeting, so we'll move on to second read. Uh, very good. We'll now move on, as long as no one needs a break, to second reading ordinances. Uh, bill number 1510 is an ordinance uh, that's uh, reclassifying or rezoning a, a property located at uh, Rice Road and US 54. Uh, Councilman Simmons, would you please present by title only bill number 1510 uh, for second reading. Bill number 1510, an ordinance reclassifying under the zoning ordinance, certain land in the city of Fulton, Missouri, located at Rice Road and US Business 54 and establish an effective date. I make a motion we approve the second reading and advance it to third reading at the next city council meeting. Second. Very good. I have a motion and a second to advance bill number 1510. Seeing any further discussion of this motion or any questions? I just go right back to what we've talked about before. Listening to the constituents of the city of Fulton. And I don't believe we're doing that in this case. Very good. Not any further discussion, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of advancing bill number 1510, please signify saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. No. I have a show of hands on the yet. no's. Thank you. Two no's, three. One, two, three, four, yes. So bill number 1510 advances. Now we'll move on to uh, consideration of bill number 1511, which is a uh, ordinance that has to do with vehicles for hire within the city, or basically taxi cabs. Uh, since Councilwoman McClue is not with us this evening, uh, Councilman uh, Shilin, would you Please present 1511 for a second reading. I'm going to pass because I'm having problems with my glasses. I'll do. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Councilman uh, Moore, would you please? Would you read? If you'd Bill present, number please. 1511, Nords amending Chapter 118, Vehicles for Hire, Fulton City Code, by repealing Section 118 26, definitions, and act of new section in lieu of thereof, establish an effective date. I move this for third you want tonight or next word we schedule. Can we do tonight please? If you like, ma'am. I would appreciate that. <laughs> I would move this for Thank you. third and final passage at tonight's meeting by title only. Second. Very good. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion of bill number fifteen ten? We have a motion and a second on that to advance it to third reading. Uh, you meant fifteen eleven? Fifteen eleven, yes sir. Okay. Bill number 1511. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. 
Hold on just a moment. Let's, let's vote on it first. How is this going a little bit? Just excited. Very good. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion on bill number 1511. All those in favor of advancing 1511 third reading, please signify saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Very good. Bill number 1511 advances to third reading. Councilman Moore, if you'd please present 1511 third reading, uh, title only. Bill number 1511, ordinance amending chapter 118, vehicles for hire, Fulton City Code by repealing section 118-26, <coughs> definition act, the new section law thereof, and establish an effective date. I move this for final passage at the night's meeting by title only. <coughs> Second. Very good. I have a motion and a second to advance bill number 1511. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of advancing bill number uh, 1511 for final passage, please uh, signify saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Very good. Bill number 1511 advances. You've heard bill number 1511 presented three times. It's now time for final consideration. Uh, please answer yes or no to roll call. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Schiberdecker? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Braun? Yes. And Mr. Shiland? Yes. Six council members, affirmative, two absent. Very good, thank you. So bill number 1511 passes. Under announcements, uh, I'm going to let you all read those pretty much the way they are there. Although, I will mention if you're a bow hunter and you'd like to uh, hunt in the city, I think it's primarily deer, uh, there will be uh, the four-legged guy. There will be a, a permit meeting on uh, September the 4th here in the council chamber. And if you need additional information, please contact City Hall. I also will mention that uh, there's still time to sign up for the Mayor's Cup Golf Tournament Annual uh, on September the 7th. It'll be at Tanglewood. Uh, this year's uh, uh, profits will go to uh, the uh, lights in, in Veterans Park, uh, the, the annual Christmas lights. So. Uh, I think it's a good project to support, so we'll, we hopefully, and we'll also have a good time with that. Is there a flyer yeah. playing golf. somewhere? Parks and Recreation. Parks Tangle and Rec, Wood. I think. So. Is there something on the website, Clay? Josh. I believe. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. With that, uh, mm. well, I guess might as well mention the annual town country dinner, which is going to be on September 20th. <laughs> at Weiss Brothers in Kingdom City. And uh, just let uh, clerk know if you want to attend. Motion to adjourn. Uh, very good, I don't have a need, need, um, need for an executive session, so, and I do have a motion for adjournment. Second. I have a second. <laughs> All those in favor of uh, adjourning, please signify the same yes. 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 Very good, thank you all for your time tonight. Got it.